Hi, this is Mike Raffin with Electrical Equipment Company. And I was hoping to take a few minutes today to walk some of you through a basic configuration and setup of an Eaton C445 motor management relay. We have a good view here of the uh, C445 relay. Uh, we're going to be working primarily with the main module, as seen in the video here. We'll jump right into walking through the setup wizard that will provide the basic parameters and setup to place the C445 in operation. I'm going to be using the Eaton Power Expert in Control software app that is designed to work with their intelligence devices. And we'll start here from our front screen where we're going to establish the basic information needed to configure a file for the C445. Initially, I'm going to select what type of communication methodology would be utilized with the C445. In this case, I'm gonna work from a Modbus TCP protocol. Common uh, integration is through the Ethernet IP. Modbus TCP is the appropriate protocol to utilize with Ethernet IP. Once I've established that communication methodology, I can then select the appropriate uh, intelligent device that I'm going to set up. In this case, it's going to be a C445 relay. Selecting that relay prompts me to define a IP address. If I have that information available on the front end, I can go ahead and enter that IP address now that would ultimately be used for communications with that device. Or I could leave it with a default IP address. And then at some point down the future, when I commission this equipment, I could define that IP address specifically for that device. Once I've set that IP address, then I can open up the C4445 and begin walking through the setup wizard. It's going to guide us through the basic parameters required to set up basic functionality of this C445 relay with a typical motor starter. Our first page of the setup wizard here speaks to the communication environment. The defaults are typically acceptable here for the Modbus TCP environment. Clicking on next takes us into the basic operational controls. And first thing we're going to set is what type of operation the C445 is going to be used in. What I really like about this software app is it has the ability to, by hovering over any of the input parameters, to give some pretty good descriptions of the options that are available. We're going to set the C445 up for direct online op operation, which would allow us to have remote control capability of the starter through the C445 as well as all the advanced monitoring and protection functions that are associated with it. The next selection is based upon the specific size of the measurement module that is going to be utilized with the relay. This information can be attained right from the bill of material or directly off the nameplate of the measurement module that's being utilized with this C445. In this case today, I'm going to utilize a 1 to 5 amp module. Our third selection here defines local control source. The C445 is commonly provided with a local HIM module that can be used as a user interface. It's typically mounted on the front of an MCC bucket or on the enclosure that's associated with. We have the option to allow it to have local control or not. In this case, I'm going to enable that local control. And then for a remote control source, we have the choice of field bus or field wire. I'm going to stick with field bus in this case. The last configuration here for the screen is we need to find the methodology for starting and stopping of the starter. And we have two selections, a conventional two wire or a three wire. This speaks to the configuration of the signals or the start and stop buttons that would be associated with this. Quite commonly, this is defined by the PLC programming and the outputs associated with the PLC. I'm selecting two wire field operation today for this example. Moving on to my next screen, I need to fill in specific data associated with the motor. Most of this information is going to be found directly on the motor nameplate for the application that we're working with. First parameter we're going to want to set is the trip class, and we have a default of five. The range is five to 40. Common general motor application trip class is 20. In, in most applications you're going to be configuring, this would give a good well-rounded overload curve and associated trip settings. Second, we need to enter the full load amp for the motor. In this case, I'm using a five amp example. I'm then going to click all the way down to the rated horsepower. And you'll notice that as I establish the horsepower and enter that, it is then going to update the watts. The next parameter we want to update is the 
rated speed of the motor. We're going to use this four pole example of 1750. And the next parameter is the rated service factor. This is important that we use direct information from the nameplate data as this factors into the overload algorithm and associated protections that come with that. Most common are the 110% and 115% motors that you see in most industrial applications. We'll leave that at 115. We need to select our rated voltage. Most motors, three-phase industrial motors, are actually rated at 460 volts. So let's make sure we use the actual nameplate voltage rating. And then rated frequency, quite common for most of North America, is 60 hertz. The rated power factor should be displayed on your motor nameplate as well. And that's commonly anywhere between 80 to 87% for most motors. The last three parameters here are subjective. The start threshold percentage is what the, the system uses to define that it considers the motor to be up and started. And it works on a basis of percentage of the rated FLA for that motor. The default of 30% is a good place to start with the general application and we'll utilize that. The next parameter is the stop threshold. This is the inverse of the previous and this is what the system uses to define that the motor is stopped. And our default here is 5% and then for general applications that is well within the requirements. Our last parameter that we would look to change potentially is the transition threshold percentage. And again, this is the the motor transition to run. So this is that process from startup to running and 115% is the default and within a good range for a general application. Once we verified those parameters and set them to the nameplate values, we would click finish and we'd show the configuration file with those values that have been established. At this point, all the basic necessary information has been generated in the file to commission and start this application through the C445. In my case here, I'm generating this file in an offline environment, which is typical for commissioning large systems with multiple smart relays in them, such as a large MCC. We would generate a individual file, a configuration file for each of the C445s in use in the system, and save those for a point at when the equipment is delivered and powered up, then I could utilize the software to connect locally or through a network connection to upload these configuration files into each of the C445s for commissioning operation. That's really all there is to the basic configuration and getting a C445 up and commissioned. I think we'll follow on with this video with some more detailed work in the advanced protection and monitoring functions to really expand on the capability of the C445 motor management relay.